464. Can I win? In the 100 game, two players take turns adding to a running total any integer from 1 to 10. The first, the player who first causes the running total to reach or exceed 100 wins. What if we change a game so that the players cannot reuse the integers? For example, two players might take turns drawing from a common pool of numbers 1 to 15 without replacement until they reach a grand total over 100. Given two integers max choosable integer and a desired total, return true if the first player to move can force a win, otherwise return false. Assume both players play optimally, right? So honestly, this uh, top part is really there to just confuse you, the whole 100 wins. What you really want to pay attention to is the max choosable integer and desired total, 11, right? So let's represent this graphically because obviously for me, it really helps to represent things graphically and I'm sure it's going to help you guys too, right? Four. So six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, right? So let's just say that this was you and this was your opponent, right? So you guys have to take turns and let's just say that our desired total here is 11, right? So obviously this example is pretty uh, obvious here, right? So if you were to pick 10, right? And your opponent would pick one and they're gonna win the game, right? They're gonna get to the desired total first. All right, so you can do the same thing for like nine, you know, your your uh, opponent would pick two and then you lose the game, right? So really, uh, if you think about it, there's no really combinations that results in you actually winning the game in this case, right? So let's talk a little bit about before we start coding the edge cases here. So instead of having a desired total of 11, Let's just say that we had a grand total of, what's the sum of all of this? 1 plus 2, 6, 10, 15, 21, 28, uh, 36, uh, 45, and 55, right? So let's just say that uh, we had a desired total of 50. Of 69 my favorite number the Shorzy number right then this would be impossible right because remember you cannot reuse integers so if you add all of this up then you won't be able to get to 69 right so you know you have to create a formula which is n and plus 1 over 2 in order to find out if it's within these constraints now what's another one Let's make it really, really simple here. And let's just say that we had, I don't know, we had, I don't know, uh, 68 and one, right? So 68 and one, what is this? This is an even number, right? So logically we say that, you know, if you have an even number and it adds up to the desired total, you're guaranteed to lose, right? Let's just say that, uh, we had, I don't know, 66, 7, and 1. Now, assuming that you go first, which is something that I would, uh, I would clarify if you're in an interview setting, is who's a player that's going first? Because if it's you that's going first, then obviously you have the upper hand here, right? You have the advantage. You're going to be pick first, and then your uh, opponent picks, and then you pick, and then therefore you're going to win the game, right? So that's essentially how the uh, algorithm kind of works here. It's just you're picking a bunch of random numbers and it really doesn't matter what order you do it because it's all about, you know, uh, how many numbers there are to choose from and then uh, what placement will it get for you to get to the desired total, right? So let's code it up and it's gonna make a little bit more sense. So what we're gonna do is first we wanna make sure that uh, we create a scene variable. Now before I get there actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually create a, uh, we're gonna pictorially represent this a little bit better here. 
So it's basically going to be like uh, a DFS here, right? Because if you really think about it, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, dot, 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 and then 10, kind of lazy here. And then if you were to pick another number here, you would have two, three, dot, 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 and then 10, right? Here you would have one, three, dot, 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 and then you'd have 10, and then so on and so on, right? Well, it's kind of like uh, permutations. So automatically we're thinking here that we have a time, a space complexity, or rather a time complexity of O to the two to the power of N, right? Our space complexity will be O of N. Because you need to find a way, like we could brute force our way through this and find out all the combinations here that lead up to this number. But I think a better way to do it is to store the values inside a variable which we'll call scene in order to avoid us doing duplicate work. And that's really going to help us time complexity, right? So without further ado, let's launch this uh, scene variable, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a helper function, which I'm going to call uh, can win because I'm original. And we're going to pass in the choices that we have and the remainder, right? Because if you think about it this way, I, I earlier said, uh, let's say that you chose nine, right? You minus nine by your target, uh, your DT, your desired total, right? And then 11 minus 9 is going to be 2, right? So that's kind of how that works and why we're tossing in the remainder, right? So we're going to put that there. And then I'm going to leave the function for later. So I'm going to say, or oh, that's Swift, sorry. Do stuff here. And we'll get to the stuff in a little bit. What we want to do is we want to check to see if we can even run it in the first place, right? What we want to do is we're going to represent our total sum to be equal to uh, the max choosable integer plus one. And we're obviously going to put this in uh, brackets here because it's like n, n times n plus one, right? It's a little bit of math there for you max choosable integer right divided by two right this is going to be your total sum so check if we can actually play the game else return false right so if we can actually play the game then our sum choices will at least be equal to the desired total, right? So that's basically our condition here. So if sum, the total sum is less than uh, your desired total, what you're gonna do is you're gonna return false because you can't play the game, right? And then next thing is if your total sum is equal to equal to your desired total then it's a matter of matter of whether you have a odd or even number so what's a good uh, representation of this well it's modulo right so return a maximum choosable integer mod 2 and since we have a boolean value that we're passing in uh it's going to return true or false depending on if the modulo has any remainder right so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create a range because remember we have to go from 1 to 10 right it doesn't make sense to choose zero because remember uh where is it assume both players play optimally now, what do they mean by playing optimally? Like, if they have a chance to win, they're going to choose the option that helps them to win. They're not Canadian. They're not going to be nice to you. They're going to do what's best for them. 
So they're going to choose whatever will help you to win, right? It's like any game, which is, I don't know well, what kind of person isn't that competitive, but uh, that's a story for a different day. So list of range one to maximum choosable integer plus one since it is zero index so we have to get to the last element in the list right and then lastly we're just going to recursively call our function here so return can win and then we'll pass in choices and your desired total right so now let's fix the do stuff here so let's talk a little bit about our base case right let's take an example here right Let's just say that, oh, um, let's just say that the desired total was, I don't know. This is not a good example. What can I do? I'm going to remove all of this. I'm going to choose one, two, three, four, five, because I don't want to do mental math. So let's see, five plus four. Let's just say that five plus four plus three, that's seven, 13, I think. Your desired total was 13, right? So let's say he chose five, right? Your opponent chose four, and then look. Oh, look at this. You know, you remove it after you choose it, and oh, won't you look at that? You know, like 13 uh, minus five minus four is equal to nine, and then what is that? I'm blanking on mental math. I am not good at that right now. I think it's four, is it? Anyway, obviously, uh, this is a one take video, so I apologize for these little blunders here. So I change it to 12. So 12 minus five is, 12 minus four is gonna be eight minus five is going to be three right so hey won't you look at that my greatest number here is actually my number so therefore i've won the game hooray so i can return true so if choices minus one that basically means the top of the array here is equal to the remainder is greater than or equal to the remainder rather we're going to return true right so let's go back here and get our array back all right so what we want to hear do here is as we mentioned earlier we want to make sure that we're keeping track of all the numbers that we visited so we're not doing duplicate work so in order to do that what we're going to do is we're going to do selected is equal to tuple choices right and then we're gonna check to see if we've actually visited so if selected in scene what we're gonna do is we're just gonna return whatever that value is right select it so keep track of all the values if we have visited this before we are just going to return it right all right so now the next order of business is to actually go through this array here right so there's two ways to do it and really it doesn't matter as i explained earlier because it's just dependent on you know what uh how many values there are and if they add up to that so what we want to do is we want to represent now the opponent, right? Now the reason why I'm representing the opponent, right, is because when we recursively call the function, it's going to be represented by the opponent, right? So I'll show you actually in the code and it's going to make a little bit more sense. So for i in range of length of choices, What we're going to do is if not can win and we're going to pass in choices uh we 
got where is it? I plus choices of I plus one. Right? Is that right? Yeah. All right. And remainder minus choices of I. All right. And then we're going to select it as seen. And return true. Now why am I doing this, right? Because if we think about it from the opponent's perspective, if you win, you know, you're choosing true. And uh, you, if you win, that means yours is going to be represented by true, right? But your opponent, on the other hand, if your opponent can't win, equals you win, right? Therefore, but if your opponent can win, equals you lost, right? So that's the logic behind using if not, is it represents the opposite of what your opponent is doing. So your opponent needs to lose for you to win. Now I know this sounds like really, really obvious, but it took me a while to actually understand it and I hope it provides some value to you if you guys have it explained simply. So Another thing is, what is with all this? Now, remainder minus choices is relatively straightforward. You know, you're just minusing, you know, dt minus five, dt minus or, etc., etc. So that's straightforward, but what's happening here? Well, when you choose a value, let's say I choose five, I remove it for from the uh, array here. So basically what I'm doing here is actually, that's not a good example. I think a better example here would be four. So you add all the values before it, thus the reason why we're doing I, and then all the values after it. And I pointed out the wrong one, but you kind of get the point. Now, if all of these conditions are skipped, we know that we've lost the game. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select, uh, what am I doing? If all have gone through, we know we have lost the game. So, what does that mean? We're gonna set our selected to equal to false, and we're gonna return false because we've gone through all these conditions and we haven't been able to win. So therefore, we have lost. And that should work given I didn't screw up, and I did. Uh, I did get it right here and as you can see here it is accepted now if I click submit here doo -doo -doo -doo. as you can see here uh, it's a pretty efficient solution here I already mentioned the time complexity here oh two to the power of n because it is a permutation problem that's honestly the best we could do for this problem now if you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to hit like and subscribe, it really helps support the channel here. Leave me a comment, tell me what you thought about this explanation, I'd be happy to make more videos, handle your requests, stuff like that. And without further ado, uh, I'll see you in the next video.